Well, hello, random YouTube people. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna talk about AC capacitors. What is an AC capacitor? How do you test it? How do you make sure you're not getting ripped off by the HVAC companies? Stick around. Subscribe. So in a video I just put out on my channel, we talked about my AC unit and it wasn't cooling and I showed you how to fix it. In that video, we talked about the capacitor. In that video, I also tried to test it with the multimeter that I had, but it didn't work. So now I have a better multimeter and one that's properly used for testing the microfarads in these AC capacitors. So what is all that? What does it mean? I'm gonna show you right now. The capacitor is a part in the AC unit that delivers power to the motor driving the air conditioning system. The capacitor sends an initial burst of energy to start the air conditioning motor and the fan. Once the air conditioner is at full operating speed, the capacitor limits excess power and it also supplies a steady amount of power during the cooling cycle. The capacitor is one of the most frequently replaced parts in an air conditioning system. Mostly because if it malfunctions or it's not operating properly, it can stop your entire HVA system from operating at all. And what's funny is it's not very expensive to replace. HVAC companies charge you a lot of money to come out and test and replace an AC capacitor. And let me show you how you can test it yourself and how you can replace it yourself. Now I've talked to a lot of people and even in the comments of my previous video, there's a lot of people talking about how they were getting ripped off by the HVAC companies. They were coming out and testing the capacitor saying it needed to be replaced. They were quoting $200, $400 to replace this thing. This little piece I found on Amazon for $13. This is the replacement capacitor. We're going to test both with the multimeter. We're gonna show you about the ranges and how to test these properly. So get yourself a multimeter, test it out, save yourself some money. So here we have an AC capacitor chart that I've written up. We've got the two capacitors, the old one and the new one. We have my old multimeter, my new multimeter, and this is actually what the problem part was in my HVAC system was this burnt up wire. It turns out this capacitor works just fine. And let me show you how I could have tested that better with a multimeter. So now let's go ahead and set this new one aside and we'll set the chart aside. And we're gonna talk about the multimeter here first. So this is the old multimeter. And on these, you can change the different levels. And this one should be testing the microfarads and the capacitor, but it doesn't really work. And so I was testing with the ohms and that didn't really work either. Let me show you. So let me turn this on and I'm going to untangle these cords really quick. So on your multimeter, you have a COM, which is, stands for common, and that's what the black goes into. And then we have this red, typically goes into this ohms and amperage area. But we're gonna be testing the ohms with this one. Now with the ohms, we should see this number jump and then go back to one if it's working with the ohms. But it doesn't really work very well. So let me show you. On the capacitor, on any of them, you're gonna see these things. Now there's dual capacitors, there's single capacitors. This one's a dual, meaning it has a herm and a fan. And what does that all mean exactly? This one right here, you see a C, that's for common. That's where your common's gonna plug into from the con our contactor. And HERM stands for hermetically sealed compressor. And this is what one of your units, this in, this in the double capacitor, this is one of your units, the HERM, and then the fan is the other. Sometimes there's just one or the other. This one is a dual run. And what we're going to test is the HERM and the fan. Now we're gonna to try to test the voltages of it first. So let me see if I can zoom in. All right, so with the multimeter here, the old version, I'm gonna have this on screen so you can see it. I'm gonna take the black lead and connect it to the comm, which is this one here. I'm just gonna stick it through this little hole. That's what she said. And then I'm trying to do this while looking through the camera at the same time, so forgive me. And then the other lead, the red lead, I'm gonna to attach to the Herm. Let's move this up into view so you can see the numbers up top, All right? So we got COM and HERM. And you see this multimeter showing me nothing. So immediately I would think that, oh, maybe something's wrong with the capacitor. Let's test the fan. Coming back out of the COM and into the fan. And still, absolutely nothing. So this multimeter, it just isn't working. If I set it to this one, this icon usually indicates capacitance or capacitance and it doesn't work either. So going back to the top, I'm going to put it into the COM and into the HERM. And you see absolutely nothing on this multimeter. 
this one, let's give it a second. It's going back and forth between zero and 0.1, or 0 0.0, 0 0.1. So this just doesn't work. Let me show you a better one. So turn this thing off, throw it away. So here is the brand new capacitor tester or the multimeter that I got on Amazon. This I got for $19. And what you're looking for is capacitance, which is this one right here. Now I know this works and I'm gonna show you how it works. And this is a really cheap and inexpensive tool for this purpose. What's also nice about this multimeter is you can test live circuits to see if they have power running to them. So I have it set to the live setting and I'm gonna to go to an outlet and touch it and you can see it's beeping at me. So this outlet's live. What about this one up here? Just touch it. There you go, beeping at me. So we've got live connectivity through these particular outlets. So this multimeter can test live circuits as well as voltage and capacitance and all of that stuff. I actually really like this little teeny cheap multimeter. This particular multimeter has a screen brightness. We can turn that on. And you'll see initially when you're testing, you might be expecting some results, but you're not gonna see anything and I'll show you why. And I do the same thing I put to the common and to the Herm. We don't really see much. We see a, some activity here, but these numbers don't mean anything. So let me show you. If you go to the multimeter and you click on, if you're on the capacitance setting here and you click on function, it's gonna change this to this little F. That stands for the microfarads that we're testing in the capacitor. In each capacitor, you're going to see the microfarad levels here. So for the Herm, we should be seeing 40 on this one. For the fan, we should be seeing five. And you see it has this U and F. That's what we're matching here on the multimeter. So now on this older capacitor, I need to zoom in. All right. So now we're testing the microfarad level. We're gonna go to common with the black and then red. Now you might not be thinking it's working right away, but if you give it just a second, there we go. We get a result. Sometimes when you're doing this right away, I thought it wasn't working, but you have to give it a minute. And so we are testing out, whoops, I dropped it at 37.9. So that's not quite 40, but we're gonna show you, is that in the range? Yes or no. And then the fan, let's see, we should be in the neighborhood of five. So we're gonna do the common there it goes resetting we're at 3.7 so that's kind of low so how do we know if that's right or not so this capacitor is working in a matter of speaking but is it working well enough so this particular capacitor is the one that I took off of my AC unit and I replaced it with a different one but technically speaking this capacitor is still working but is it in the appropriate ranges now let me show you I've got a chart that I've printed out I have to zoom out. And this is going to talk about the capacitor. So we have a list of common capacitor sizes, the plus and minus 5%, plus and minus 6, and then plus and minus 10. So if we look back at the capacitor again, we're going to see that this says 40 slash 5, if it will ever focus, 40 slash 5, and this is a plus or minus 6%. So at 40 and five, plus or minus 6% is in a working range. So if we come back to the chart, if we go to 40 and we go to the 6%, which is over here, at 40, we should be lowest at 37.6 and the highest at 42.4. So are we within this range? Yes or no? Remember 37.6, 42.4, we're really, certainly not this high. So let's remember just this one here, 37.6. Is this capacitor in the 37.6 range? Zooming back in here for you. So again, we're taking our hot or our common. Don't know why I said hot. Common, and then into the Herm. And you have to give it just a second. So we're looking for 37.6. And so this is 37.9. So the Herm on this one is within the range. So the Herm is good. This capacitor so far is not necessarily bad, but it is getting really low. And the lower it is, the worse it's gonna work, especially on the fan part here. Let's test that. Again, that was pretty low. 3.7, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9
if we come back to our capacitor chart here, we have on five minus 6%, we should be at 4.7. So we're way low on the fan. So the fan portion of this is still technically working, but it's not working well. And that's gonna cause your AC unit to use more power to spin the fan to try to cool the unit down. So it's not gonna work nearly as efficiently. So even though this capacitor is working, technically speaking, I probably still would replace it anyways because the fan is too low. I'm going to leave this chart up here for a second in case you wanna take a screenshot. This is really handy, I'd keep it around. If you don't have the chart in front of you, you can always just do regular math. This is 40 minus um, 6% of 40. So that's 40 minus 40 times 0 0.06 equals 37.6. And of course, if you plus 6% of 40 to 40, that's 42.4. Let's test out the new capacitor we got on Amazon and see if it's within the ranges on these charts and see if it's better or if it's not. So again, <clears throat> opening up this box, this is the one we got for on Amazon for $13.20. Same kind of thing, we have a common, a Herm, and a fan. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'm gonna take my black and to go to the common. Technically speaking, I don't think it really matters which one's on which side, but just for ease of remembering, I'm gonna put the common on the common and the Herm the red on the Herm, and let's give it a, whoop, spun on me. Kind of hard to do whilst recording. Give it a second. And this one's 39, it should be 40, so that's pretty dang good. The lowest on the this one, according to the chart, we're at 6%, the lowest we should be at is 37.6. So we are definitely fine on the Herm on this brand new capacitor. Now let's test the fan on this brand new capacitor. Here we go. Give it a second, 4.84. So the lowest again on the fan is 4.7. So we're at 4.84. So this fan is operating within the operating parameters and it's working just fine. And this particular one is an exact replacement of the one that we just tested that I got on Amazon. It's a 40 slash five. It's got the 440 volts AC. It is the plus and minus 6%. They even have the same product model number and serial number, or maybe those are reversed. But this one is working better than the one we just took off, especially the fan. So that's how you can test with a multimeter to see if you need to replace your capacitor, to see if your capacitor that you have already is working. And let's go test our other AC unit to see if its capacitor is working based on the ranges that we see on this chart. Now it's time to go outside and test the other AC unit to see if its capacitor is within range. So in the other video, we replaced the capacitor in the upstairs unit. This is the downstairs unit. So remember, when we're replacing the capacitor or going to test the capacitor, we need to cut the power first. So if we follow this line right here, it's going to come up to this box right here. Need to walk around the other AC. So this is the one we turned off before. We need to shut the power off for this one. You just make sure this little piece right here is out of the way and it goes up or down and out and you see it reads on that means it's on if you can read off it's off so we're going to pull this and that's the power is cut off to that unit while we're working on it we could set it here we could also put it back in the off position so it says off but for now i'm just going to make sure i really don't have anything going on i'm going to leave it out now using a 5 16 wrench, I'm going to take off the bolts that hold on the panel covering the AC capacitor. Of course, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you check the capacitor specifications. You can see this particular one is a 30 slash 5, not a 40 slash 5. This unit is smaller than the unit that runs the upstairs, so it has a smaller capacitor. You need to pay attention to this because if we threw a 40 slash 5 in here, that would not be a good thing. Now that we know the capacitor is a smaller size, let's check our chart. The capacitor size at 30 going to a plus and minus 6%. We're going to get a 28.2 at the lowest and a 31.8 at the highest. Of course, now I'm just setting up the multimeter to have the same settings to test the capacitance with the microfarad settings enabled. Let's go. This multimeter is nice that it has the clamp. I can just clamp it onto the AC unit itself. It's just gonna dangle here so we can see the readings. Before testing this capacitor inside the AC unit itself, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the wires just to make sure there are no issues, no 
overflow of electricity stored up in the wires, nothing like that. So the blue wire is for the Herm, the brown wire for the fan, and the yellow for the common. You're gonna wanna make sure you take a picture of the wires before you do anything, just so you remember where they were, what colors went to which place. Not all HVA systems are gonna be exactly the same and use the exact same wires. So take a picture of yours before you do anything. So here I'm just taking a screwdriver and deactivating or grounding any of the electricity that might be built up in these particular terminals. And now we are ready to test this capacitor. And like we've been doing, let's test the Herm first. I'm gonna take the black lead and attach it to the common and the red and attach it to the Herm. Actually kind of hard to tell from this angle because of the glare, but it is 28.4. Let me get you another angle. So here you can see the Herm is testing at 28.5, 28.4 around there. Referring back to the chart, you can see that the Herm is within range, but it is on the low end. And now resituating to test out the fan. So we gotta just wait a second, and the fan is testing at 4.53. Ouch, that's a little bit low. It should be 4.7. I'm gonna go ahead and rewire this capacitor. It is working, it is blowing cold air inside. It's just working harder than it needs to be because the fan is low and the Herm is nearing the bottom. I'm going to order a new capacitor on Amazon and we're gonna install it when it shows up. Really no rush on this one. It's not a hot day. The AC does blow cool air. So we are okay to just wait for the new capacitor to show up. And now back over to Amazon, I search for a 30 slash 5, 440 volts round AC capacitor, and this is what I found. This unit looks exactly the same, and this one is $12.10. It's a little cheaper because it's a smaller capacitor, but this capacitor has all the same settings we're looking for. 40 slash 5 plus 6%. Let's go ahead and buy it. A couple of days later. Of course, to install our new capacitor, once it shows up, we follow all the same steps. Cut the power first, take off the access panel, remove the wires, grab a screwdriver with a hex bit large enough to undo the bracket holding the capacitor on, wiggle out the old capacitor, and wiggle in the new replacement capacitor. If you got a capacitor that's a different size, maybe it's fatter, go ahead and watch my other video where I show you how to create your own custom mounting bracket for the new capacitor at a bigger size. Once the new replacement capacitor is in place, go ahead and tighten back down that bolt. And the last part of the AC capacitor install is to rewire. Make sure that the common goes into the common, the Herm goes into the Herm, and the fan goes into the fan. If you want to test one last time with the multimeter, you certainly can. Otherwise, go ahead and put the access panel back on. Go ahead and turn the power back on. And go inside and test it with your inside thermostat. Now sit back, enjoy the cool air, and revel in the fact that you replaced this and fixed it for only $12. Thank you so much for watching. As you just saw, with the right tools, with the right parts, and with the right help, this is the right help right here, you can get the job done. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars to get an HVAC company to replace a capacitor that only costs $12. $12 for the 30 slash five, $13.20 for the 40 slash 5. It's that simple. Just a couple screws, unplug the wires, plug it back in, and you're done. Save yourself some money, get educated with DIY Bride, and remember to like this video, share it with all of your friends, and remember to subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs>